Hey, how's it going? Doing really well. How about yourself, William? Good. Good. We will go ahead and get started here with William Byron, driver of the number 24 Exalta Chevrolet for Hendrick Motorsports. And William, man, big doubleheader weekend at Dover International Speedway for you. A very important weekend. Uh, walk us through, uh, you know, what's what's going on with you heading into this race weekend uh, as we get ready for that doubleheader. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for it. I think Dover is um, – it's probably one of Chad's best tracks, obviously working with Jimmy in the past. I feel like he, um, he's got a really solid notebook there and I feel like, um, you know, a really clear direction of what he wants to run there. So that's always good. I think that helps us, especially when we don't have practice. So um, <clears throat> I'm excited for it. I, you know, two races, two shots at it. Uh, we've done some simulator work this week and, um, you know, I feel like we've done our homework. So I know the guys are working hard, um, getting down to the, final couple races here to try to make the playoffs and um you know so I think we can do that and hopefully we can just have a, a good weekend kind of try to extend that points advantage that we have good deal we are going to open the floor up for questions again if you have a question for William go ahead and raise your hand in the participants queue and we will call on you we're going to start with Jason Brown go ahead with your question Jason Thank you, Matt. Uh, it's good to see you again, William. You mentioned the playoffs. Obviously, everyone has an eye toward as we wrap up the regular season. How are yeah. you, I guess, trying to maybe, I guess, alleviate some pressure from yourself or try not to be think thinking about it too much or be overwhelmed? Yeah, I mean, you just got to go out there and race, race your race. I mean, I think that, um, you know, the last few weeks, honestly, have been more challenging than, than any other just because, um, you know, you can't let that kind of change your mindset um for for the weekend so it's definitely uh definitely just tense times and you gotta gotta try to capitalize on every point and I really don't look at the points or think about the points until the race is over so uh that's kind of our mentality on it try to just grab as many spots as we can on the racetrack and hopefully that puts us in an advantageous position so yeah I mean I think Daytona is probably the only place that I'll be super worried about points um you know but hopefully we can go out of this weekend and have close to a 30 or 40 point advantage, um, which is really going to be the only safe bet. So, uh, so yeah, that's going to be my goal this weekend. Good luck, my friend. Thank you. Our next question is going to come from Mark Garrow. Go ahead with the question, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for the time today, William. Um, it's kind of weird to me that, you know, in order for you to stay up and be in position on points, you've got to keep Jimmy Johnson at bay. What's it like knowing that one of you's in all likelihood, as you look at the different scenarios, if one makes it, the other one can't. And, of course, you're out there to do the best for yourself individually. But is it kind of weird fighting for that last spot with your teammate? Yeah, it's odd. I mean, it's, um, you know, you, you'd like to be in a different position than that. But that's ultimately what's what's happened in the position that we're, we're in. So I think for us as a team, um, selfishly as the 24 team, we want to do as well as possible and get ourselves into the playoffs so we have something to, to race for in the last 10 races and, and really have an opportunity to, to advance through the rounds like we did last year. So, um, yeah, it's tough. I mean, I, I'm a, the biggest Jimmy fan I feel like out there. And, uh, you know, I, I hope that – I hope we both can make it somehow. I know this is his best racetrack coming up. So um, we're definitely keeping an eye on that. Hopefully uh, we're within striking distance of a few guys ahead of us in points as well. So – uh, maybe we can just keep climbing our way up there and and um, and try to get ourselves out of the hole that we kind of put ourselves in earlier in the season. You mentioned before being maybe a little more nervous about Daytona. Um, coming out of the Dover weekend, you can maybe hope to move up to 15th, somewhere in that neighborhood, maybe a little bit better. But it looks like you'll go to Daytona, you know, hopefully, in a, uh, you know, on the positive side. But still, how nervous are you that going there that close to the cutoff line? either on it or just ahead of it? Yeah, I think you got to kind of take the approach of, um, you know, this year with that being the cutoff race, you know, typically we have, gosh, I think Richmond, typically Richmond's been the cutoff in the past. And then last year, I think it was Indianapolis. So, you know, those places are somewhat more predictable. Um, Indianapolis being a little less predictable, but, you know, you at least had an idea uh, going in of what, what you were going to face and, maybe where you could run whereas this Daytona race is going to be like an elimination style format race so really just uh gotta go in there with as much gap and buffer as we can um I think that you're going to have to race aggressively at, at Daytona because if you don't get any stage points then 
you're ultimately going to, you know, be looking at possibly a one or two point day, which would be horrible. Um, so I think you got to go for the stage points, hopefully you get five or six or 10 would be awesome. Um, and then you can kind of live with the result at the end of the race. So that's kind of the way the speedways have been lately. Um, when I look at Talladega in the playoffs last year and kind of how we approached it, uh, we raced hard the whole time and it didn't work out at the end, but you know, at least we had some points to fall back on. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Our next question will come from Claire B. Lang. Go ahead with the question, Claire. Thanks. Well, William, since the NASCAR series returned to racing in May, there have been four tracks that hosted back-to-back -back races, Darlington, Charlotte, Pocono, and Michigan. And of those eight, you have scored six top 15 finishes, and you're one of six drivers who improved your finish from race one to race two. So you're one of five drivers whose average finish from Saturday to Sunday is improved by an average of eight positions. What does that say, and does that give you confidence for a weekend like this? Uh, I think so. I mean, I think having another race in the weekend just um, makes it easier to learn and, and um, improve from the previous race, whether that be the car or even yourself. So I, I think it's definitely an opportunity to, to get better. Um, I feel like us on the 24 team, we were slightly better with practice last year. I feel like we had, we had really come into our own as a race team uh, through practice and going through the fall events and the playoffs. We had some really, really good runs. So um, I, I do think that hurts us a little bit. So I think this, the second day kind of allows, you know, us and the engineers and, and Chad and myself to kind of work on all the little details that we need to improve. Um, you know, and ultimately that's just our mentality. If we're not improving the next day, then that's definitely going to be a, a, a poor finish and a poor day. So, uh, yeah, I like the double headers. I think they're great. Um, it really gives you a chance to get comfortable with the surroundings and, and uh, you know, just the racetrack in general. And you had said even though Dover is concrete, the surface changes a lot during the race. Can you sort of tell the race fans, can you tell the race fans how the – track changes from a driver's perspective, how you feel it out. And as they watch the race, they think about this because it's pretty prevalent at Dover. Yeah, rubber at Dover is a huge factor in speed. So, I mean, typically you'll go out there and practice and the first few laps on the track are a half second faster than, than the, rest of the, um, the rest of the practice. So, or, or from practice to practice, maybe the first practice is Oh. And we have lost William. The first practice is dot, 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 and he's frozen. Yeah. <laughs> if you get him back, can you have him start from the first practices or something where he was at so I can piece it together? We'll try our best, Claire. Yeah, I know. If we get him back. Here he is going to join back into the room. Hey, sorry no about that. It, no, no, no worries. No my worries. Internet, <laughs> my internet died. Okay, well that's oh, fine. You know, you, we we were hanging on your every word, and you you yeah. finished off by saying, uh, at least from what we heard, is that you know from the first practice, and then boom, dot dot dot, okay. froze. So gotcha. if you wouldn't mind, if you wouldn't mind re-answering that previous question, yeah. from player B. Yeah, yeah. So the first practice is really there's probably a half second in lap time difference from first practice to second um, at Dover. And I feel like um, typically the thing that makes the biggest difference there is rubber. So, you know, you get into the race and under caution, everybody pulls up the rubber off the racetrack. It's, it's really sticky and the track is super um, aggressive for, for rubber being laid down. So 
it's uh it's very unique and then really the groove moves up by the wall at some point during the race and then it comes back down so it's just a it's just a challenging track to try to chase uh those those changing conditions for sure wish you good luck thanks for your time today okay thank you appreciate it our next question will come from chase will help go with the question chase hey william thanks for joining us um going back to daytona for uh for a second um so even though you're fighting on the bubble right now, uh, you have a great shot to win at Dover. Do, uh, with, with the speed that you guys had at Daytona in February, does that kind of alleviate some of that pressure, or is it a whole different ball game because the track's going to be hotter? You're on mute, William. Oh, sorry. Okay, you got me now? Yep. Yeah. Um, sorry, it was me. We always seem to have speed in qualifying and in the duels in, um, in February. That seems like, you know, our guys do a really good job of preparing um, going into those races. So I feel like that's a kind of a, a normal thing for us. You know, I think that as we get into the summer months and we go back to Daytona in, quote, July, you know, typically when we do, uh, which is what the track's going to be similar to here in August, you know, we typically just – we fight handling a lot more. So um, – we, we try to do a pretty diligent job of trying to figure out where our handling needs to be for this race and making sure that, that we handle well enough. I, I think that really the cars slide around a lot at Daytona when you come back in July or August. So, you know, the guy who wins, um, I mean, it can be a random guy who wins this race just because it is, it is so treacherous. The track's difficult to get a hold of. Um, but it also helps, I think, some of the, the better cars and the better drivers, um, and the best handling cars, you know, rise towards the front in this race. So um, that's what we're going to work diligently on. I, I don't really think we've spent a lot of time yet on Daytona until we get past Do Dover and kind of know, know what position we're in. Thanks, William. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Our next question will come from Dustin Long. Go ahead with the question, Dustin. Thank you, William. Um, choose rules back in play this weekend. Um, and I'm just curious with this new rule, how does it change or what more do you have to do in terms of prep? Uh, or is that something just the engineers kind of feed you and, and when you to, to help you decide what lane to choose during the race? Yeah, you know, I think it's um, what we found at Michigan, which was much different, uh, obviously, because the bottom was so um, so treacherous and, you know, the, the draft was so big in the outside lane. So I think that there it was um, a bigger factor in just choosing the outside lane um, unless you were really going to lose a lot of positions. So um, I think Dover is – fairly even on lane choice. I know the bottom, I know the bottom lane doesn't accelerate as well uh, on the restart zone. So if you're, if you're maybe second, you might choose to, to restart fourth instead of, instead of on, on the inside and in uh, second. So I don't really know. I think it's all just feel and how your car is handling. Um, obviously the engineers can try to, you know, science it out as best they can, but typically just common sense um, plays into a, a rule like this for sure. I also want to ask you with the doubleheader weekend, um, what is it like the Saturday night to the Sunday for a driver? In a normal race weekend, you've got, you go home, you do the recovery or whatever. But I'm just curious in just the mindset of having to complete a race and then start thinking about what needs to be done to the car or what more you can do the next day what, as you're worn out. How, what's that process, that, that Saturday night like that you go through on these doubleheaders and what you might go through this weekend? Yeah, I think this is probably going to be the biggest challenge, um, you know, so I think there's going to be a lot of, a lot of physical training and um, recovery that's going into Sunday. Uh, luckily, there is quite a bit of hours in between the races, you know, there, I think the, I believe the races start at four o'clock. So it's, um, I mean, it's going to be pretty straightforward in terms of, you know, having a lot of time to devote to recovery and eating right. Um, and then you got the team aspect, they're trying to get the car back through inspection they're trying to get it cleaned up from the first race. Hopefully you don't have a lot of damage. So you got to get your feedback back to them pretty quickly. Um, you know, and they, they quick, they pretty much have an idea of what the car, what the issues were with the car in the first race based on your feedbacks and comment on the radio. So uh, try to just give that detailed feedback. And I mean, hopefully we can just make it better with our tools and, and kind of have a, a better second race. That's the goal with the double header is just trying to, trying to improve. It's almost like the first race is almost like a practice session. Thank you. Yep. Our final question is going to come from Terry Sabiston. Go ahead with your question, Terry. 
Yeah, William, uh, let's talk a little bit about the heat. Um, how was it when you were at the road course in Daytona? How are you prepping for it? Do they, they're talking about some changes with the window, but that's not going to be affecting you coming up at Daytona. So what are you doing to prep, and, and what do you think they, NASCAR can do to help alleviate this heat, heat problem in the car so much? Well, I think there's, there's like two factors really in the heat, two or three factors. There's the fact that we, we've raced a lot more uh, over the summer than we typically are used to. So we're racing, you know, the recovery time's not as, not as much, even though we don't have practice and qualifying. You know, we're going from, you know, typically have a, a midweek race or we have a doubleheader race, um, you know, so we have more events. I think the other thing is the climates that we're racing in is, is twice as hot as we typically race in during the summer. Uh, typically in Daytona, if anything, we're racing at night, um, never during the day and never on a road course. So, um, you know, and I think the right side window piece um, definitely, definitely made the cars extremely hot this year. It just, it just becomes hard to breathe. Uh, you just, you know, you're kind of, you're kind of in, sitting in a sauna um, and you're kind of suffocating in the same air that just keeps staying in the car. Uh, whereas before we used to have air kind of evacuate and leave the car and, uh, and you, you know, you might not be getting fresh cold air, but at least you're not breathing in the same air uh, the whole time. So yeah, I think NASCAR is doing a good job of kind of making some changes. I think it was, I think, to be honest, the road course to Daytona was a little bit dangerous how hot it was. Um, you know, I think a lot of us were going to possibly make it to the end of the race, but um, definitely not anywhere near 100%. So uh, it was going to be a difficult challenge. Luckily, we got the lightning delay and, you know, had a chance to get some fluids and cool down and, uh, and go from there. So that was, that was a blessing for sure. And what are you doing to prep for it? Uh, just I, I train um, with my trainer. So I really just try to um, – I've tried to amp up my training in August. Um, you know, typically don't do a lot of training during the uh, – sorry, during the um, summertime because it's so hot. But with the schedule that we have, it's pretty necessary. Thanks. Good luck this week. Thank you. William, thanks again for taking the time. Good luck this week. And with two at, Do at Dover International, we'll see you at Daytona next week. Yeah, thanks, guys. Appreciate it.